Hey y'all, this is Moonlight Cowboy. I wanted to make a build today that is an alternative to Blood A melee weapons. This is a build for people who have been using Blood A melee weapons for a while now and are probably getting a little bored with it or they're looking for a little bit of range in their game. The build I'm going to show you today is pretty fun to use. It's not going to require you to change any of your special points around. When I put this build together, I wanted to make a build that was functional by itself and didn't need the melee abilities. A build that complements a Blood Aid melee build style. A build that has range without running low on ammo. A build that is fun to play and a build that can take out multiple enemies at the same time. Step 1 is acquiring the weapon itself. I was fortunate enough to get two really great harpoon guns, so I'm going to use them in the example today. But you can get a railway or a broadsider. You know, what really matters is the effect on those. You're looking for something that has either quad, instigating, or bloodied on it. Bloody being preferred, but quad is also really good as well. With many of the guns I've mentioned, you can get multi-shot mods for those guns, uh, which I highly recommend because you'll see uh, in some examples that you can have unlimited ammo with those guns. In this example, I shot the Deathclaw one time and I got back three harpoons. The pros for this build are unlimited ammo, uh, range, tagging multiple enemies, solid damage output, uncommon build style, and compare with a melee weapon. Uh, you will need to choose where you want to put your perks, whether you put them fully into the melee weapon or you put them fully into the gun of choice. You could also split the perks up as a hybrid as well. This build does have some cons, however. You do have re reduced damage in PvP. Uh, you do have guns typically breaking faster than your melee weapons. Minimal damage to uh, the Scorch Beast Queen and hordes of enemies can overwhelm with my current build, I found that I'm doing about uh, 3 to 4k damage per shot if I'm up close with Vats on uh, to enemies like Deathclaw, Sheep Squash, Scorch Beast, you know, kind of the hard hitting enemies. I'm still killing those in usually one shot. The other really nice thing about this build, as we know when we're melee players, is that melee is kind of a death sentence when we go to PvP, right? So in this build, it actually gives you a fighting shot of doing some damage and killing some people in PvP rather than just trying to run at them as fast as you can and then probably getting mowed down. As you can tell from this example, uh, I'm still three-shotting or two-shotting other players with this build. Uh, this is a quad gun, however, so if you are using a single shotgun, it does make it more challenging. Uh, what I recommend is shooting and leading with your ranged gun and then coming in for the kill if you have a single shot. Otherwise, make sure you always have that backup plan available so you, if you do run out of ammo, you are able to execute at a high level. Step three is your special and perk setup. Again, the beautiful thing about this is that the cards change, the points don't. Starting with strength, I have Traveling Pharmacy. You can switch this out for another perk that's more viable for damage. Uh, I obviously have all the heavy gunner perks equipped as well, uh, but for the Traveling Pharmacist, obviously you can find another one. I just like that because it makes it easier to carry. Uh, on top of that, I have Lock and Load Ready at all times. That one's really good for reload. Uh, you're going to need that reload speed. Butcher's Bounty is one that I just used because I have a mutation for that. Otherwise, I wouldn't really have a need for a perk here. In Endurance, I have four points in Ironclad. I really like that extra defense. Uh, and then I have uh, one point in Radical. I think that this is an essential one. If you are running a bloodied build, uh, five strength for only one point in the card is awesome. Here I've got Lone Wanderer. Uh, obviously, if I was on a team, I'd be swapping that out with Strange in Numbers and uh, some other perks that would help me with a group, uh, like Squad Maneuvers and probably Medic. I keep five points in intelligence so that way I can do my weaponsmith and gunsmith and those things. But in the meantime, I do use two points in first aid. And of course, I have my three stars in nerd rage, as we all know from blood aid melee builds. Uh, having that nerd rage under the uh, 20% uh, really helps us out a lot uh, and helps us with uh, damage. It helps us with AP regen. It's just a really nice perk to have. 
for agility, I run with Action Boy. I like getting the regenerated 45% on my action points. Uh, up next, though, I do use Through Hiker. It is one of my only other quality of life perks, so you can feel free to change that out with another one. Covert Ops gives us the uh, the extra sneak damage, which I really like. Uh, you would switch that one out for uh, Ninja if you were using a melee, obviously. Uh, and then right after that, we have Evasive. Uh, evasive is really good for um, for mitigating damage as well. Uh, and then on the last one is Dodgy. Dodgy is great. Dodgy helps you to mitigate point or damage coming into you at the cost of action point. On to the luxury, we have Bloodied Mess. I think that this is an important perk for everybody. Uh, regardless of your build, you should have this perk. Extra 15% damage. Serendipity, 45% uh, chance to avoid damage when below 30% health is amazing for only 3 points. Uh, so I have that at all times. Uh, from there, I keep my two mutation perks on, which is Class Freak. Uh, if you have mutations, you have to have that one for sure, uh, as well as Starch Jeans. Uh, Starch Jeans is great uh, because it keeps your mutations on you. So I run with all the mutations. Uh, you don't have to run with all the mutations, uh, but that's something that I like to do for my melee build because it doesn't really affect anything on the gun other than your aim damage. Over here, I just created an overview of all the perks that I have and all of the special points and the allocation of those points, uh, just so you can get an idea of what I run. Again, when you're running your melee build, uh, you pretty much just need to swap it out for your melee cards. Uh, and it's about five or six cards you're swiping out, which makes this build really easy if you want to do that, that range damage. So why did I make this build? Well, for somebody who has been bored with the melee build, although I wouldn't change it because it is the most OP build in the game, I wanted to have some variety. I wanted to have some range. But I also didn't want the build to be weak. I didn't want to walk around and have to take 10 to 20 shots to kill something. Meanwhile, I'm getting owned by something else. But I wanted to do all that not at the expense of my melee build. I wanted to be able to have some diversity, but I wanted to be able to go back to my melee build anytime I wanted to with just maybe taking about 30 seconds to change a few things up. I can tell you that you won't be doing the same damage as you would be with your melee build, okay? Uh, I use a bloodied melee hook, uh, and it does really great damage for me. What I can tell you is you're still going to be one-shotting most things. You can actually do something cool that you can't do with your melee, and you can usually shoot sometimes multiple enemies at the same time and kill them. Uh, normally it would take multiple swipes from your melee weapon to kill multiple enemies. When I tried to use this, obviously, against the Scorch Beast Queen, it didn't go so well. I ended up switching right back over to my melee uh, and sneaking up on her and doing my normal four to 6,000 damage with my Blood Aid Mate Hook. Uh, but this is good for just about anything else, especially when you're just wandering around the wasteland. Uh, again, one of the other reasons why I'm using this build in the first place and why I thought it was important to bring it up is because of all the free ammo you get. Uh, I end up dropping probably two to 400 ammo every few hours uh, for the harpoons that I use because they just are so abundant on all the enemies. One other thing I want to point out, because I've died a lot to this, especially since I have all the mutations, don't walk up to an enemy and just blast them in point blank range because if you have low health like I do and you're a bloodied melee build, you're going to die. So people that aren't melee builds might watch this video and say, well, you know, I would probably allocate some of my special points in other areas. But the true purpose of this build is so you can keep your melee build while still having the functionality of having ranged if you want it at any given time. The point to this build is to be able to use a gun while still maintaining having your melee abilities, because as we know, the melee abilities right now are still the most powerful in the game in PvE. For you melee users, the coolest thing about this build is, yes, you can finally shoot something out of the sky instead of jumping around trying to hit it out of the sky or pulling some garbage weapon that you have out of your bag and shooting it a thousand times, probably running out of ammo. So that part is super exciting. If you like this video, please subscribe. I really appreciate your subscriptions. I appreciate the people that watch this video as well. Uh, I hope it was informative, I hope it was fun, I hope it was exciting, and I hope it helps people. Awesome. Thank you so much, and y'all take care.